I thought I'd uh, show you folks what motor boating is. Some of you may have never heard of motor boating in a radio. Well, what's motor boating? This is it. Sounds just like a motor boat, don't it? No matter what I do. No matter what I do, no matter what I do up here uh, on the dial, it won't uh, stop motorboating. So what we're going to do is open it up. I did a YouTube video on this radio a while back, and it played real well, really nice. Never did anything to it, though. <laughs> I probably should have, but of course I got, you know, distracted by other things. Uh, this is the filter capacitor. It has 250 microfarad. Uh, I think they're 250 volt uh, E caps. It consists of those, and then I have a 0 .047 capacitor here that's across the uh, the line, the power line. So what I'm going to do is move this can, and you know somehow try to sandwich in a couple of new. Uh, I don't have the 50 microfarad. I have 47 microfarads. We're going to put a couple of new. 47 microfarad capacitors in there. See if we can't get this thing to stop motorboating. I like listening to this radio. It's a cool radio. Well, that was an easy removal. It was just a, you know, a little heat and extract uh, with the old solder extractor here. And it loosened it up and it just plucked right out of there. So what I'm going to do is replace, uh, put in these two 47 microfarad E-caps. And of course you can see there's no way they're they're going to fit inside that can, so I can't do a restuff. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to tape these two together. Like so, where we can read the values and read the voltages. And the negative leads I'll tie together, connect together, because they both go to the same place. And it will go in that small hole. There's three holes down there. The negatives go in that small hole on the left. And each one of these positive leads will go in each one of those two larger holes. The negatives on the left, positive at the top, positive at the bottom, and the large hole. I'll insulate them up, and I'll <clears throat> these will be no problem. They will go down through after I solder them together. But these leads are not long enough to wrap around the side of the uh, capacitor and have them stick down through the hole where I can solder them in place. Now, that, that would be too much to ask. <laughs> You know, it would have been a quick and easy solder job. So what I'm going to do is put some wires on there. I'll put some red wires on there, and we'll use wire, uh, you know, insulated wire, to stick down through that hole and solder it up. So let's get started on that. All right, I'll solder these up fairly close to the body of the capacitor, and then after it's soldered, I'll snip off these wires right here. That way, I don't have to use any insulation or anything uh, like, you know, heat shrink or Teflon tubing or anything. I can just bend it down along the side and it won't be any problem at all. Now we'll take this uh, aluminum strip that I cut out of a larger piece. Uh, this is uh, exhaust manifold tape. You get it at any uh, automotive shop. You've seen me use it before. And what I'm going to do is wrap it around there and tie the two together. There it is, ready to go in. I've got the two negative leads. I did not twist them together. That would be these two leads right here. I didn't twist them together. There's no need to twist them together. They'll uh, they'll slip right down into that hole side by side, and I'll solder them up together at the other side of the circuit board. <clears throat> and the other two, uh, the positive leads, have been stripped and ready to go down through their respective holes. The whole thing will sit in there in this direction so we can read the value of the capacitors uh, after everything is installed. Well, so far my brilliant idea seems to be working out okay. <laughs> All I have to do now is go ahead and solder the two positives, solder our negatives up here, and then turn it back on and see what happens. Here's the shot from the top. You can, if you look down in there with a flashlight, you can still read the values on those capacitors. I, I can't stress how important that is for uh, a future technician, you know. Alright, let's see what happens. 
Now we're getting the hum out of it. No control over the volume. That's not good. Nothing happening here. Well, looks like we have a total failure on our hands here. Well, at least the clock's working. <laughs> Okay, ladies and gentlemen, at least the motor boating is gone, okay? That's uh, problem number one. We'll have to check the rest of it now. Find out what's going on. Well, the clock is working, and I hooked it up with uh, gator wires and went ahead and changed out this old uh, tiny chief capacitor that was across the power line. Got rid of it. It was 0 0.047. The problem I'm having is the filaments are not all lighting and the negatives of these electrolytics are connected into those filaments let me go back and check that line the, uh, this is the negative of the uh, electrolytics and there appears to be a crack in the run right there or some kind of a separation I scraped my uh, a lot of that green stuff away where I could see it better and cleaned it with some alcohol I'm going to try to flow some solder across there and see if that improves any all right, that's done. We got us a nice uh, continuous run from solder from the connectors to the run. Now we'll give it a good cleaning. Let's see what happens. Hopefully we'll have some filaments uh, lighting. All right, I've got it connected back up. Let's see what happens. Probably nothing. <laughs> well, at least the clock is running. Yes. I don't know what's wrong with it. Probably a tube or something. <laughs> well, nothing's happening. Let's see if we're getting any filaments back here, any heaters lighting it. Ooh, we're finally getting, yeah, we're getting some heaters lighting up. I don't know if all of them are lighting up, but at least a couple of them are. There we go. There we go. The reception in this building is really terrible, but at least we're making no more motor boating and the filaments all light up and I'll put it all back together and move it to a different part of the of the building and you'll be able to hear it a little better. Well, after eyeballing this thing for a couple of seconds, I realized that I need to relocate this capacitor right here. It's too close to that tube. That tube gets pretty hot and it'll in turn make that uh, electrolytic hot and it just won't last long. I need to pull that one out and relocate it over in this empty space somehow so it's well insulated from everything else down there. So let's do that. All right, this one here will go in over here, but you know, I need to make sure that nothing on the bottom is going to touch this metal negative area. Nothing down in there. There's a resistor down in there. I don't know if you can see it or not, but there's a resistor down there and a couple of jumper wires and I don't want See it down there? I don't want uh, either one of them to touch the negative, so I'm going to go ahead and put a little liquid tape on the bottom down there and give it a good insulator uh, from that stuff. Okay, there it is, all covered with the, uh, see if you can see it a little better, got it all covered with that liquid tape. And now it'll be well insulated from anything down at the bottom there. And the tape is reapplied. All right, that makes me feel better. Lots of space between the tubes and the two and two electrolytics. I like that much, much better. Well, that's it. I think we finally got this thing fixed. Plays pretty nice, just like it did better than ever, actually. Spinach and zucchini, red onions. Okay, we'll call that one fixed. Now look, the intent of this whole video thus far has not been 
really to show you how to repair a radio, you know, which we lucked out and got it fixed, which was cool. You know, I'm happy with that. The intent here was to show you how to have fun with your hobby. This is fun, therapeutic, enjoyable type stuff. You know, we get to poke around in the radios, and if it doesn't get fixed, but the first thing you do, so what? You know, <laughs> See, you should say, hey, oh, cool, you know, I get to go back in the radio and poke around some more. That's what the hobby's all about, poking around in there, you know, and everything that you replace or repair, if it still doesn't work, well, you know, you can say, well, I now know what it's not. You know, what, what's not causing the problem so have fun enjoy the hobby if it takes you four five six times if it takes you six months eight months to repair this single radio so what you know that's what our hobby is all about okay we're going to go ahead and uh move on to the tv chassis and get an update on that and then we'll close out this video come and get it a big surprise Surprise for me. Yes, sir. It's a new breakfast cereal called Maple. From now on, you're really going to like oatmeal. Take off your hat. The hat. I want my cowboy hat. After breakfast. I want it now. <laughs> you like maple sugar candy? <laughs> That's oatmeal. Right. But it says here it's maple flavored oatmeal. I want my hat. Tell you what, I'll be an aeroplane, you be the hanger. Open the door, here it comes. Loaded with delicious, maple flavored, maple. Cowboys love maple. Yep, cowboy. I want my maple. This is what's been happening. I've been recapping uh, the bottom of the old TV here. And I've got it all done with the exception of uh, five capacitors. A one, two, three, four, and another one that goes between these two pieces of tape here. And the reason I don't have those changed out is, I don't know how I did it, but I overlooked the fact that these were 1,000 uh, working volt capacitors. These five caps. And of course, I didn't order 1,000 uh, volt caps. <laughs> So I'll be putting in a, uh, an order for these capacitors. In the meantime, while we're waiting for it to come in, uh, we have received our Radio Days uh, higher wattage, low value resistor order. So we're going to start on that next time. And when we do, uh, we'll be checking not only the higher value, the larger capacitor or, uh, resistors like these big ones, but we're also going to look at all the small ones. And when, and when we do the small ones, I'm going to show you all a little trick. So until then, this is John.